Welcome guys. I've seen quite a few comments on Steam about people complaining about the ship's accuracy or the gun's accuracy. And um, there are many, many factors involved in uh, how accu accurate your guns are basically. So I thought I'd rather than keep um, responding to all of the comments on Steam. I thought it might be easier if I just made a video about it and then if anybody wants to see they can just quickly go on the video and not have to read through a load of comments. So uh, so I'm going to try and demonstrate all the different things that will affect your, your gun accuracy. So I haven't made a list which I probably should have done. <laughs> so I'm going to do everything off off the top of my head. So the first thing is obviously your um, base accuracy. So the towers all have a base accuracy and a long range accuracy. These both are the obvious things that will affect your uh, your gun accuracy. So sometimes they're not in order so you might want to just quickly look through them just to make sure that this one on the left is the, the best. So if you're using a ship um, as a gunship rather than a torpedo boat then you're going to want the best towers for accuracy. I'm using the 1890s uh, tech just because I assume that the majority of people who are struggling are still stuck on the 1890s campaign. So um, I'll, I'll do it on the 1890s tech first and then I'll do it on the 1940s tech because there's some things in there that the ships have access to that you don't have access to so I can't demonstrate in 1890 so so I'll do that just to finish the video off just to show them a few different things. So here now you've got the best base accuracy and long range accuracy towers. If we just quickly put down a gun, um, before I put down a gun you can see here um, the accuracy for each range. So you'll be able to quickly see which guns have got the best accuracy. They're not necessarily in order going up from left to right. So. Here, let's see if I can find one here. 10,000 meters here is not 0 0.4. 10,000 meters on this one is 0 0.1. So this one's a better long-range accuracy gun than the one above it. But the one above it is a better short-range accuracy gun than the one below. So quickly look through the stats of each gun to see whether it's designed for short-range or long-range and then choose the, the gun that suits the purpose. So let's just uh, use the 9 inch gun for now. Also you can see the barrels, the amount of barrels will affect the accuracy as well. So um, if you want a particularly accurate gun you'd obviously choose the single barrel but obviously the double barrel you're going to have a lot more shots coming in. So uh, it's not twice as many shots because if you have a look the rate of fire is considerably faster on the uh, 9 inch gun and the reload time so it actually works out that the, the single barrel guns are not much worse than the double barrel when you factor in the rate of fire and reload so let's just use the, the one, one barrel for now just for demonstration purposes so if you hover over a gun it will tell you the stats. If you take off or change anything on your ship these stats will change. So you can see at 1000 meters we've got 18%. If I take off this tower, oh it's actually stayed the same at 18%. That's quite surprising. It's gone down to 16% if you take off both towers. So you can see if you take off and remove things or if you change your um, stats, your ship stats, 
you can see the difference that it makes on the actual gun if you hover over it. So let's put these towers back on. Now the reason that when I took this tower off it didn't change the uh, the gun is because I've got a full weight offset here because I've only got one gun at the front. So when I took this off it just reduced the full weight offset which offset the uh, the accuracy penalty that the tower was giving. So if I did the same thing again but with no full weight offset We're on 18, take that off, and now it drops to 17. Okay, so that's how you see what your um, accuracy penalties are affecting by actually hovering over the ship's gun. So you saw there that the weight offset made 1% difference. Let's, uh, let's double check on that actually. So 15% has not actually made any difference at uh, 15%, I'm surprised. Let's see if we can uh, see if we can change that. I'd have to add something at the front here. So it's 15% now, because I've added a 50% full weight offset. So you can see there that the, the fore and aft weight offset have changed the ship from 18% down to 15%, which is obviously a considerable change. So that is the obvious um, difference between... Uh, your gun accuracy is getting your weight offset so so far I've only covered the towers the barrels and the uh, the weight offset so these are pretty obvious you probably already figured these out for yourself but there are some less obvious things which I'll go through so first you've got smoke interference this is a huge one that I'd imagine a lot of people miss. So if we stick on a funnel, the smoke interference has gone up to 18.5. So um, at the moment, we're on zero base accuracy because it's in the minus figures. We know that the 1000 meter is 18%. So if we stick a couple of funnels on now, Let's put it up to 24% uh, penalty on the base accuracy, which has reduced its uh, 1000 meter accuracy to 13%, all the way down from 18%. And that's just from the smoke interference, that is. Well, it's, it might actually be from the, uh, the four weight offset as well. So let's see if we can balance out the four weight offset so we get a, an accurate representation. So it dropped it by 4% because 1% of that was uh, the full weight offset. So as you can see the fore and aft weight offset make a big difference. That dropped it by 3% when it was at 50. The smoke interference makes a big difference. That's dropped it by 4% when you're at 81 smoke interference. So there's two main things. And then you've got these pitch and roll as well. These make a, a considerable difference. So if you put a lot of things on the extremities of your ship, so the front and the back, rather than clustered in the middle, and on the sides, rather than down the centre line, that will affect your pitch and roll. So I'll try to demonstrate, I'll take these off again, just so this goes back up to 18%. So if we stick a load of casemates on, and a load of torpedoes. 
then that's going to put our pitch and roll up quite considerably because they're all on the extremities. So I'll continue putting more on just so I can get it to a quite extreme level. I don't know what size I can fit here. I'd imagine it's going to be quite high though. So it's at least nine. So by putting them guns on, which a lot of players might do put all of these guns on, it's put our pitch and roll up to 28 and 31. So now we can see that dropped our accuracy at 1000 meters by 3%. So smoke interference dropped it by 4, 4 weight offset, then again I have got a 4 weight offset here so I should really balance that out to get a uh, proper representation. Might be easier to do it just with the armour. There we go. So now it's dropped it by 3%. So the pitch and roll dropped it by 3%. The smoke interference dropped it by 4%. And the fore and aft weight dropped it by 3%, I believe, as well. So in total, if you had all of them things combined, you will have dropped it by 3, 3 and 4. So 10%. So... It makes a huge difference, things like the pitch and roll, smoke interference, and uh, fore and aft weight offset. So they're the, uh, the major differences to a ship. So um, let's put all of these on at the same time and see how much of a difference it makes. So we've got the smoke interference, we've got pitch and roll, and then we just need a four weight offset now to uh, to demonstrate. Let's put a normal armor build on to see what we get. Obviously, this is not based on this year, uh, this armor design. This is based on a further year where you've actually got more weight offset, uh, weight allowance displacement. So here we've got, with a normal armour setup, you've got almost 50% four weight offset, which is considerably bad. So we can have a look now, it's dropped down to 11 from 18, with all these three different things combined. So a 7% decrease in accuracy. And that's from pitch and roll, four, um, four weight offset or aft weight offset, and smoke interference. So they're the majority of um, the changes, basically, that will, if you shore up them three things, you will get much, much higher base accuracy on your guns. So there are a couple of other things that will affect your base accuracy. So if you have a look on the shells, if you have a look here, it says... Um, gun base accuracy is lower with a heavy shell than it is with a light shell. Mm. So that would make you think, obviously, light means more accurate. Well, unfortunately, light doesn't mean more accurate because it factors in the gun range and the gun range is the main factor into gun accuracy. So it turns out that heavy is actually more accurate than uh, than light is, which doesn't make much sense, but that's how it is. So if you have a look at the 2,500 meter accuracy, you've got 3% with light shells, you've got 3.2% with heavy shells. So if you want to change your armament to get more accurate guns, you're going to want to go for gun range, not gun base accuracy. <clears throat> so that one's uh, quite an obscure one. Um, 
These also have gun range on, so it's basically your shells and your propellants that you'll be choosing gun range over gun accuracy to get a more accurate gun. Now I believe that's everything for accuracy on um, on this 1890s design. Oh, crew. Crew makes a huge difference. So as you can see we've got 11% and 3.2%. If you put this up to full, you've got 17%. And 4.9%. So it increased the 1000 meter accuracy by 6%, which is obviously huge. <clears throat> and it increased the 2500 meter accuracy by 1.7%, which again is pretty massive. So the um, crew training obviously makes a, a big difference. Now you can't change this in career mode this just happens as you're improving your crew uh, through crew training spending and through battle but you can't change this at the start of a, a campaign so you can focus on training up your crew during the campaign but at the start of the campaign this isn't something that you would be uh, changing on your ship building screen so <clears throat> there's one more thing, but I'd have to show you in battle, but with the crew quarters, basically, as you lose crew, your ship stats get worse. Now with cramped quarters, as soon as you lose any percentage of crew, it will start affecting your ship's performance. But with standard quarters, you get more... Um, more crew than you actually need so if you have a look here on the battle stations main guns 170 you only need 149 so you've actually got 21 crew on the main guns that you can lose before you start taking a penalty same as if you put it up to spacious you've now got 50 crew that you can lose before you start taking a penalty to your guns so I think that's everything. I think that's everything for the shipbuilding aspect in 1890. So now I'll quickly change it to 1940. <clears throat> Probably easier if I just start a new design. Okay, so now the few things that weren't shown on the 1890s tech are these equipment. So I will quickly just put a couple of towers down so I can put a gun down. I'll go for the most inaccurate gun. Get the uh, full weight balance first, actually. Okay, so range finder. Now, if you have a look here, there's obviously a lot more uh, stats to look at here, which Makes it a lot harder to see. Might be better off just using a different gun, to be honest. But if you have a look towards the bottom, you've got 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.7, 1 1.1. So if we put on a coincidence, uh, sorry, a stereoscopic, which is mainly for long range accuracy, You've now got 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.8, and 1.1. Uh, so you've got 0.1 more at max, super max range, 0.1 more at 25,000 meter range, and 0.4 more at um, 22,500. 
Now, if you put it onto coincidence rangefinder, these are meant for shorter distances. You've got exactly the same stats. 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.8 and 1.1. So you've got exactly the same stats on the coincidence for long range shooting as you have for stereoscopic. So, <laughs> at the moment, coincidence is always the best thing to go for. For some reason the devs haven't fixed this yet, hopefully they will in the future. But if we leave it on coincidence and have a look at the short range accuracy, at 2500 meters you've got 47% and then at 5000 you've got 20%. So 47 and 20. If we put it on uh, stereoscopic, we've got 44 and 19. So coincidence was 3% better at 2500 and 1% better at 5,000 meters. So always choose the stereo, the coincidence. The stereoscopic just isn't, isn't worth choosing. It's also heavier and costs more as well. So it's 1,000 tons heavier. And 3 million more expensive. So there's, you basically never want to choose stereoscopic. Always choose coincidence. So that's uh, one more thing with the accuracy. And then the last thing is the radar. Obviously this makes a huge difference to your accuracy. So 0 0.5, 4, 8, and then 1.1. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 9, and 1.2. So we changed our long range accuracy. 30,000 meters by 0 0.1 and 22 0.5 by uh, 0.2 and then it obviously makes a difference to short range accuracy as well so you've got 48% and 21% 47% and 20% so it doesn't change the uh, short range accuracy a huge amount but it does help with the long range accuracy so yeah I believe that's everything for the ship building aspect I can't think of anything else that that I'm missing ah yeah I, I've just remembered another thing okay so let's take off everything apart from a gun Put the gun in the middle so you got a zero weight offset. In fact, you don't even need to do that. You can just... Uh, let's have a look here. Okay, so the last thing now is the stability of your ship. So, if you have a look at the stats when you're choosing a hull, you've got stability. So now you've got 94, 92, 90, 85. So we're going to compare the lowest, which is 85, to the highest, which is 94. So it makes a 9, plus 9 difference between the two. So if we have a look at the worst one first. The 18 inch has got 70%. At 1,000 meters and 30% at 2,500 meters, so 70 and 30. If we change to the ship with plus 9 stability, you've got 75 and 33. So the stability made 5% difference in 1,000 meters and 3% difference in 2,500 meters. So it's a huge difference, it makes a gigantic difference, the, uh, the stability of your ship does. So I believe that's now everything. I can't think of anything else, I'll just have a quick look again. Yeah, so I believe that's everything on the ship building side of things. So what we'll do is just choose a ship.
And then we can just jump into combat. And I'll show you a couple of things during combat. So, I'm just going to start it at super max range. So I can show you a few things before I start getting shot at. Okay, so if we have a look in this shoot info bar. I'll close everything else just for now. So you've got cruise speed, which affects your accuracy. You see here I've got a plus 26.43. So cruising speed is between the top of the F on full, so there, and the bottom of the H on half. So there. So cruising speed on this ship would be 20 to 22 to 23 technically. 20. It actually shows you exactly what it is on the ships on this screen here. 22.6 that is. So on this particular ship it would be 19.8 to 22.6. So it's from the bottom of the H to the top of the, the F on half and full. Don't put it in the middle of the F because although that's where it shows you on the mark on here, that is not actually where the best percentage is. You can see up here. So if we, uh, if we go to where it tells you cruising speed is, we've got once we actually speed up. Okay, so we are at 24.2, where if we drop it to below the top of the F, It's gone to 33.7 from 24.2. So uh, as you can see, 9.5% difference that makes. So changing it just from the middle of the F on full to the top of the F on full does give you a 9.5% bonus. So that's where you want to be uh, putting, your, putting your speed to optimize your accuracy. So a couple more things, if you do a rudder turn or a sharp turn, Battleship is probably not the best uh, example for this, but you can see that the own maneuver penalty is starting to come into place. So we've now got 9% uh, penalty from the own maneuver. Now if you're a tiny ship, this can go up to like fit minus 50%. So if you're doing really tight turns with a uh, with a destroyer, you can end up giving yourself a min minus 50% penalty, and you you're not realizing you don't you don't understand why your guns can't hit. But it's because you're turning too sharply. So when you actually want to bring your guns to bear, you want to be going in a straight line, pretty much. Which, obviously, if you're much faster than the enemy ship, the easiest way to do that is to reduce your speed so you're not going in circles around them. So um, you reduce your speed and sail in a straight line. Obviously, there are other things going on up here, which is the weather. Third uh, guns grade is just like the quality of your guns, so that's Mark 3 I think. <clears throat> oh yeah, I suppose I should have included that earlier on. I'll go back and show you that. Um, and then you've got near flagship, so your flagship will have a radius, which uh, it gives a bonus to 
for the ships. I can't see my radius for some reason. <laughs> Is it incredibly far or or do I need two ships in the battle for it to come up? Well, we can see if we can find it anyway. Is this it? No? That's dead strange. Usually your ship has a, uh, a radius which will show you your It'll show you your uh, flagship bonus distance, but for some reason I can't seem to find it. It might be because I've only got one ship, or it might just be because it's so long that I haven't moved far enough to show you. Uh, crew training has got its percentage up here, but I've already shown you how to check that in the ship building screen, so... You can either see the representation up here, or you can see it in the shipbuilding screen, it's the same thing. Pulse stability and tower, this is basically <clears throat> the main tower base accuracy that I was showing at the very beginning, and the hull stability is the last thing that I showed you, which is uh, the stability of the hull, obviously. When you're choosing your hull, the stability makes a huge difference, so this number represents both of them the pulse stability and your main and rear tower. Long range techs, um, you get these from your towers but you also get them from your uh, radar tech or stereoscopic if you're going to use it but I, I, there's no point because the base, the coincidence range finding is just simply better. And then technologies, basically in the campaign you get passive bonuses um, which you don't have to apply to your ship it, it applies automatically so I have got a list of them on Steam it, I've done a Steam guide for all of the uh, technologies so if you were interested you could check that out but it's not really important because they get applied automatically so yeah they, these will just happen as you progress through the years you don't really need to worry about that at all uh, damage instability, that just popped up then. Basically, as your ship gets damaged, um, you take instability penalties. So a ship that's uh, got 50% structure damage is going to have a huge penalty to a ship that's got 0% structure damage. So, uh, with these huge ships, you don't get much of an instability penalty. But with a tiny ship, you'll get a huge instability penalty. So um, it, it ticks down. Um, it doesn't always stay at the full amount. That's like a shock penalty. So if you if you land a big hit, they get an automatic shock penalty. And you can see it now ticking down. That's basically just showing them recovering from the, the hit that they've just taken. But like I say, the, the smaller the ship, the bigger the penalty, the longer it takes to recover from it. So I believe that's everything in-game. I can't think of anything else in-game, but I will quickly go back and show you the one thing I missed on the ship building. So if you have a look at these guns... When you hover over them, they have a mark over them. So it says times three, nine inch gun, mark five. So mark five is how modern the gun is. Twenty inch guns only got mark three. So what you'll find is the gun with the highest mark is the best gun to choose. Um, as long as it's a high enough calibre for you. So if we, have, if we go down... Mark 4 starts at 15 inch. So if we have a look at the uh, the accuracy between um, Mark 3 and Mark 4, 16 and 15, you can see that the 15 inch is actually more accurate than the 16 inch because it's a higher mark. So I'll see if I can find another example. So here, Mark 4 and Mark 5. 
The Mark V 13 inch is more accurate than the Mark IV uh, 14 inch. So always choose the gun with the highest mark and then choose the category that you want in caliber. So you'd either want a Mark V 13 inch, a Mark IV 15 inch or just the highest Mark III. So yeah, I think that's everything. I think that's covered everything. So I uh, hope this has been helpful guys. Thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you soon. Well, sorry about this, but I've just noticed something after re-watching the video I recorded, so I, I need to add it on to the end because it's massive. Um, so basically it affects your armour. I've never noticed this before, but I do remember the devs saying something around 0.99 or 1.01 .01 patch um, about them changing something to do with the armour, but I never really paid much attention to it because um, I don't. It was about stopping people from overloading on 4 instead of aft to give themselves a, a ridiculous ricochet chance um, basically gaming the system now because I never do that I never bothered investigating what changes that it made well I've just noticed what changes it's made and my god is it huge and considering I've been playing for hundreds of hours and I've never noticed this I feel as if I have to bring this up just in case nobody else noticed. So here we go. Here's an explanation. I've got 45 and 12, 12.8 um, on the pitch and roll. Okay. So if we combine the base accuracy of each one, that is minus 3.2 and minus 11. So minus 14.2. Okay. So we've got a minus 14.2. Now we've got four weight offset here. And that's minus 7.8. So minus 14.2 down here. And minus 7.8. So that makes minus 22. 14.2? Yeah, 22. So... With that in mind, we've got minus 22 base accuracy with all three of them combined. So you see this number up here because it's right in front of your face. It's impossible to miss. And you know, I need to sort out my weight offset. Well, a lot of people might think, oh, I'll just, you know, stick some armor on the, uh, on the ship and balance it that way. Rather than balancing it, moving things that are on the ship. Um, like this for example or whatever they, they're balancing it um, using the armour instead well that's a terrible idea and I've just noticed and I'll show you what's going on so yeah with that, I was just checking that moving that hadn't changed the numbers ok so we were at minus 22 with all three of them combined so let's use armor to balance this up. And look how much the pitch and roll are increasing. So we've now balanced this. Not quite, but almost. Now let's calculate it again. So we haven't got the longitudinal anymore. The four weights offset. Or the aft weight. But, you might have reduced that by 7.8. But let's have a look, see how much of a difference it's made down here. We've got 16 base accuracy and 5.1. So it's made 21.2% accuracy. Which is almost exactly the same as what you've just taken off from the 4 weight offset. So you haven't actually fixed the problem at all. You've just transferred the problem over to a different part of your ship. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, 
deceiving, deceptful, only having the four way top set up here. Uh, because you think, oh, I'm fixing the problem by doing this. But you're not fixing the problem at all. Um, you're just hiding the problem, and it still remains hidden amongst your pitch and roll. So, yeah, if you're ever in the position where with your armor completely balanced, like it is now, with nothing on, no more on the four than there is on the aft, if you ever find yourself in that position and you've got a ridiculous four weight offset, as you can see, a minus eight percent accuracy is just terrible. Um, you don't want a minus eight percent accuracy. So, rather than balancing it with armor, just do your best to balance it with moving stuff around on the ship. Now. You're going to be able to change a lot of stuff around on the ship. Um, these old holes are not particularly great because they've got all this uh, structure in the way that you can't change. But on the dreadnought holes, um, you know, like the post dreadnought holes, you usually just got a nice flat surface and you can just shift everything forwards and backwards. Well, yeah, do that instead of um, changing your armor. And if you were, for example, um, going to build like a Nelson class, that's not what I want. Where everything's pointing forward and you're just going to be charging at the enemy. Don't just load up your four belts and think that you're okay, because you're clearly not. As you can see here, if we take off all the aft belt, because what you might be tempted to do is shift all of your superstructure backwards, um, because you're only using the Nelson design pointing forwards. So you shift everything backwards and then load up on your four belts. That's something that I've seen a few people do. Um, but if we have a look here and we take off all our armor on the aft belt, oh, we, we're going to have to actually. I thought it would have made the difference immediately, but we'd have to actually build the ship out for, for it to take effect, I think. But anyway, I can't be bothered to build the ship out just to just to show you that. But yeah, don't don't just load up on one side for or aft. Um, have a completely even balanced ship with your armor. Right, okay, I think that's now covered absolutely everything. So, thanks for, thanks for watching, guys. Take care, and I'll see you soon.